equipment, alguien necesita un equipo de interpretación. We're going to make this um, workshop in English, so anybody that's, si, si alguien habla, anybody that speaks Spanish only, needs an, an, an interpretation equipment. Si alguien que solamente habla español necesita un equipo de interpretación, déjenos saber. No? Okay. So we're going to start off. Um, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Michelle. I am with the Georgia Latino Alliance for Human Rights. Uh, we are based um, in the city of Atlanta. And uh, we are a grassroots organization. Um, we are a grassroots organization um, created to help and educate um, immigrant, um, the immigrant community in the state of Georgia. Uh, we, uh, our purpose is to increase um, increase the, the, the participation and the struggle of the community and um, for human and civil rights, regardless of their um, uh, immigration status. Uh, my partner, Amilka, he um, is with the Georgia Latino also. I don't know. Hello. <laughs> my name is Amilka and also with uh, Glar and we have, uh, are you going to say your name? Yeah, we want so, to see. So say your name and, and say where you're coming from. Where you're from. Yeah. Atlanta. Atlanta. I'm Dana Sullivan. I'm from Chicago. Chicago. Thank you. Um, I'm Mary Ann. I'm from Chicago as well. I'm Mackenzie. I'm from Chicago. I'm Mila. I'm from Chicago. <laughs> I'm Lisa. I'm from Chicago too. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm Laura, and I'm from Virginia. I'm Haley, and I'm also from Virginia. I'm Nico from DC. I'm Beth from DC. Uh, so Tomas, uh, I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. Adelina from Atlanta. Finnegan, I'm from New Jersey. <laughs> well, thank you for coming, um, joining us here at the workshop, and we're going to start off with the workshop. Oh, yeah. Sorry. So, um, so we're here from Atlanta, as uh, Michelle said. Um, we work in, uh, in the state of Georgia. We have um, Comités Populares. Uh, people's communities. Uh, so, in, in around Georgia, 16 different communities that we help and we organize. And we're going to talk about that later. But uh, I hear people from Chicago, Iowa, uh, Arizona, and New Jersey. And so, uh, you probably know what are familiar what is happening with your community or with a Latino community on, on your own state. So, what we're going to do now is just uh, frame a little bit what's you know the, the context of our Latino community in Georgia. Georgia um, is um, it's not like Texas or Arizona or or uh, California where the Latino community has been living there for generations. And Georgia is like junk community, if you can say that, uh, junker community. Uh, after the the. Um, the Olympics in Georgia, the, the Olympic Games in Georgia, the Latino communities um, help actually to build uh, the stadium and all the infrastructure uh, to have ready for the, for the games. So um, our community uh, is facing a lot of struggles uh, and uh, some of the struggles of our community are facing, um, we are naming right here like checkpoints. Um, probably don't, you don't see those checkpoints in your states, but these are very common in Georgia. Um, the check checkpoints are you know, said just, the police know where a community lives. Uh, the trailer parks or the apartment complex 
or where the community goes to shop, sh do the, the shopping, to grocery shopping, or where the community go to church, for example. And the police do the checkpoint or roadblocks just right there. So this is very um, uh, something that the community really struggle with because uh, how you escape, you know, from a roadblock that is just next to your door, and and, and um, you can be stopped and be deported for just don't have a driving license, and that happened very often in, in in our state here in Georgia. So this is something that we try to do. Um, First, educate and organize, and my coworker uh, Michelle is gonna talk more about this later. Just want to find name this. This is an issue that our community is facing all the time. You know, when they go to school, they they might be in stop, and stopping uh, being in stop can lead to a you know uh, two days in jail, ten days in jail, and transfer to immigration. And they want to talk more about the. The other stuff. Um, Georgia, for example, we have the SB 350, and this um, law, what it does is criminalize um, people that have been uh, stopped without a uh, driver's license. Uh, the first time you can get a, a ticket up to $500 in two or 10 days of jail. And then if you are stopped with a driver's license, the second time, you know, the, the, the ticket is going to increase and the time in jail is also going to increase. After the fourth time, you can be, um, this is going to be, uh, or become a felony. So it's uh, just uh, a uh, traffic violation can lead to, to have a record, a criminal record. So after the fourth time in Georgia, uh, driving for a license, you become a felon. Um, then we have the 287G program, which is a federal program. In Georgia, there are four counties that have this program. And uh, how many of you have, have heard about 287G? One, two, not many of you, okay. What this program does is it's an agreement between the county and immigration, uh, ICE. Um, so immigration has this agreement with the county, and when with someone is stopped, um, whatever reason, an immigrant is stopped with uh, whatever reason at the road, uh, they have an office. Uh, this program has a, an immigration office or officers too. Uh, that have been trained to ask for immigration status for a person that is being stopped in those counties. So if you happen to don't have a license and you're stopped in Gwinnett County, which is one of the, the county in Georgia that is being deported so many, many immigrants during, during these years, um, so they're going to um, take your fingerprints and they're going to process you for deportation. Uh, so that's what happened in those counties that have uh, this agreement between uh, ICE, uh, Immigration Customs Enforcement, and the county. And uh, there are the counties, Winnet County, uh, Cobb County, Hall County, and Whitfield County have this uh, program. So it's a very close, very close relation between immigration and the local police enforcement. So this is how this program works, and it's something um, that our community faces all the time. Uh, and this, and just to mention also, the discounts that I said before, they're very highly populated. Um, immigrant communities live there, and Latino communities you know, are living there, and um, uh, are facing this every day. Every day that they go, as I said before, go there, do their grocery shopping or go take their kids to school or whatever thing that they every everyone needs to do. And the other um, we have secure communities, which is another agreement uh, between the county. This works a little different, but uh, it's also leading to deportation. Um, it's also an agreement, it's not a law, so the county can say we don't want to collaborate with immigration, 
But in Georgia, the all counties are collaborating with immigration. So um, they uh, take your fingerprints when you are processed uh, for whatever reason of the county, and they send the data, they, they match the database with uh, FBI and immigration. So if you are an undocumented uh, or, or they suspect that you are an undocumented immigrant, they're going to um, send that uh, information and, you, and they can be processed you for the protection. Yeah. Um, so that's how this program works. And then we have HD uh, um, 87, which is uh, similar to the um, anti-immigrant law in Arizona, the same that we have in Georgia, who was approved in 2011. Uh, so makes an immigrant you know, illegal or being, being an immigrant makes you legal in the state of Georgia. Um, and similar to the Alabama uh, HD, SB 56, and other um, anti-immigrant law in different in other states. Um, so our communities face all these all the time, persecution of the local uh, police enforcement, um, violent acts toward the community, racial profiling, uh, so our community is also afraid to the police, so the, the police doesn't uh, mean a security for them, it means uh, uh, a threat to their, their security. So if someone you know, is um, victim of a crime or a domestic violence, for example, uh, it's very hard for them to call the police because the pol if you call them, the first thing they're going to ask you is if you have a social security number, if you have an ID, if you are uh, able to show that to the police, you can be arrested and processed process for deportation. So this is a little bit the context, and I, I know uh, if you have some question, we're going to um, do it more. So, sure. Thank you, Mika. Um, well, um, our next slide takes us to community organizing, which means that that's uh, one of the parts that our, our organization does. Um, what we try to do is um, for the struggles and the laws and the, and the programs that these counties participate in, makes us actually organize a community because the community is afraid of um, going to church, going to the grocery store uh, for all of these um, agreements and, and laws. Uh, when we get contacted, it's basically um, we ask what's the issue. Most of the issues that we have um, faced is that the checkpoints. Checkpoints are being done um, in outside of church, like Amika um, said, um, outside the grocery stores. Every, uh, almost in the places where there's no criminal criminalization going on. So what we do is um, uh, go, basically our We've been all uh, all of, around Georgia, so um, we contact the community. We talk about the issue. We form a meeting, and then after that, we decide what's going to happen. Uh, we can come up with meetings with the police department of the city if that's the part the police officers are doing the checkpoints, or if the, it's the police officer of the county. We may we try to make a meeting with them and tell them our um, concerns and uh, basically ask why is it so many checkpoints that's going on. Um, also, other, other issues are the high um, fines that are given. Some, some people are being um, charged for driving without a license. Um, the ticket for them to bail them out is around $2,000, $1,000. It varies, but it's you know, $1,000 that most of the communities, the Latino community does not have. They are working on a, a minimum wage job, which they don't, and they have families too, which they don't have that money. Um, so what we do is um, find the common struggle and then becoming a Comité Popular de Georgia, a committee, a people's committee, which is a group of people who um, are, who come together and, and basically um, su supervise what's going on in their city. We have 16 um, people's community in the state of Georgia. And the ways, um, and the 
results of um, basically of the of the meetings, the we done rallies too, marches in Fairburn, for example, um, the fines were super high. The checkpoints was an everyday thing outside a uh, trailer park. And so what we organized was um, the rally toward the police department. And from there, they, the, the checkpoints decreased. And so they started knowing that, you know, there was an organization, a group of people that came together to fight the, um, of the, of their, you know, treatment against the community. They knew the points and the locations of the Fairburn City, Fayetteville City, um, where our community lived, and that's where they would put their checkpoints. Um, so that's basically what we do. Um, our communities, our comités, our committees stay active by, um, again, supervising their own city, um, letting us know the, how things are going with the police officers, letting us know if there's any racial profiling. Uh, for a police officer against the individual, um, letting us know, um, you know, what an everyday thing, what happens with the community. If a police officer threatens somebody, if a police officer pulls somebody for any reason, you know, um, that's what, that's how they stay active. And they also stay active by participating in many, many things that um, basically the whole, um, the whole bar does. Some are actions and some are rallies, marches that we have done in Atlanta, um, and um, just staying active, you know, by fighting for, for our rights and fighting for, for what we believe that we, we need the same treatment as everybody. Um, there has been, uh, what's it called, um, violent acts against com our, our community. Uh, people who are racially, you know, violent to our community. Like my partner was saying, um, People are scared of reporting abuse from their partners, domestic violence, of robberies that they have been through. Because when police officers come, they ask for their identification. Then they run their record. Oh, okay, so you have this, or you have been detained for this. So they're criminalizing us for things that we have done in the past, but that weren't paid. So they're criminalizing us again. And that's um, one of the things the issues that our community faces, and that it takes us to to go to uh, the jail. They process they process um, our fingerprints. They um, share their our fingerprints, our records with ICE and other federal agencies, which means ICE decide to pull the hold on us or they don't. And this means you know families being torn apart, um, mothers being estate, becoming single mothers. And, and, and staying with our children. And now we have to step up and, and do the whole work. And children being you know, um, mentally um, affected, you know, staying with other parents. So it's becoming a really, really big issue for us because you know, you're messing with our children, you're messing with our moms, you're messing with our dads, our sisters. So this is one of the, the reasons we do this work. And basically here in Georgia, since, you know, it's a really, um, Georgia is like an antique state. Where we, we receive almost everything, and it's a Republican state. So we can say it's, there's more racial profiling here. Um, and that's how our comités work. And he's gonna talk about campaigns. I just want to make sure that this picture was taken uh, and with uh, our director Adelina was in a meeting with them and, uh, and this is in Doraville city. Uh, the people you know, were uh, uh, trying to organize them together but they don't have a room to do the meeting. So they went to the laundromat at the apartment complex and they had the meeting out there to you know, organize themselves and see what we can do to uh, uh, fight um, checkpoints, roadblocks, and all that. So this is very, um, uh, you know, the the, the resilience the the community uh, have, you know, against all the things that we are fighting against. With. So I just want to mention that. And then, I mean, um, Michelle already mentioned you know, the campaigns that we do. Um, I just want to mention before this that we, uh, as an organization. 
uh, have a hotline. So we constantly are listening what the community is facing. They tell us, you know, this is my issue. I have a person that is being stuck um, um, because you know didn't have the right license. We don't know where he is. Uh, we know he was stopped in this city. So we try to navigate the system with that because some of our community, many of the communities, I should say, um, should say um, don't have the ability to you know navigate the system. Um, some of them don't don't speak any English or don't. I, 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 we're, we're, we're able to, you know, go to school and learn even to write in, in their own language. So that's something that the community uh, um, uh, is facing, but we try to assist as many as we, we, we do. So um, assisting is another thing that we do, uh, and then organizing too. So let's just mention that. And then uh, we have rallies as. Um, uh, Michelle said, um, we are in this big campaign, uh, I think since a lot of, I mean, deportation is one of the big issues of our community. Everything that our community faces, checkpoints, uh, racial profiling, that is going to lead to deportation. So this is the issue that we uh, think is, you know, um, huge is bigger uh, than the, the, the other issues. But um, so we are constantly in this campaign to not want more deportation. And Adelina is going to talk more about this. Um, <laughs> sorry. Um, we have uh, this campaign also that is called a Wish for a Holiday. In this campaign, this is our third year uh, doing it. Uh, basically, is uh, give to the families and the kids, especially, an opportunity to them to write a letter to the Congress, or last year was to Obama, I believe. Um, you know, saying, this is what happened in my community. My dad was arrested in the border. Uh, I want my family together. I don't want to, uh, our community be in the border. So uh, that's the campaign that we uh, actually are working right now. And uh, the kids are doing their art, you know. they. Uh, through the father and mother, and probably one of them was very a little far from them because maybe he was deported or uh, was arrested or was in detention. So uh, we're, we're working this campaign right now. We're working the campaign not one more. Um, and um, for immigration reform, we believe that immigration reform is needed, but we believe also that uh, to have an immigration reform uh, that legalize 11 million um, uh, immigrants, undocumented immigrants in the, in the United States, uh, we first have to start with stopping the deportation. And that's one thing that uh, Mr. Obama can do, you know, because he is the, uh, uh, he, can, he can do this order from, from, from the, uh, uh, an executive order to stop the deportations. And then, um, the DACA, the, um, the, the first action for child arrivals, who was, uh, which was approved last year, um, it was executive order also for Obama. So we want to spend also that uh, order to all of uh, 11 million undocumented immigrants before you know, an immigration reform is done Congress. So um, our actions are, what we do is march and rallies. Uh, we have done a rally for HB 87, uh, a, a rally and a march for HB 87 in 2011. Um, and, so, and others in 2012, and, and that was in April 2012. And this year was October 5th of 2013. Um, the one, the picture you see in the, with the purple immigration reform now, that was, yeah. that was that was October fifth, um, and the one of the top is um, a rally um, going in the Phoenix, Arizona, going to um, the the ICE detention center and that is the ICE office in Phoenix. Thank you. 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 Thank you
um, that was organized by um, many organizations, um, Puente and Ending On, um, and other organizations, you know, um, came to it in, in support, and it was a conference where we got workshops and, and informed each other. Other things that we do is um, visit to centers or police departments, like the one where the police officer is. That was a police meeting with America's uh, police department here in the state of Georgia. Um, the other things that we do is popular theater. Um, what we do is um, members of the community come together and plan out a uh, theater play, a play uh, where they show what's going on with immigration reform, where they, um, they act out, you know, um, what's going on with the police officers collaborating with ICE. And also, um, the um, oh, this action, <laughs> I forgot the name of it, is, um, what we did it in Washington. We um, took a visit to Washington, D.C., and we also had a, a rally um, in front of the White House. And we also made this action. It was made there and in, what's the name of The station. And we made it somewhere else in the station. What's the name of the station? Union Station. In Union Station. It's a flash mall. It's a flash mall. Um, and it was also um, our community members um, formed part of it. So it's basically one of the, the actions that we make. And um, that's a picture of the rally in March in 2011 for H87. And um, it's a picture of our event you guys can see here um, that we used for the action on Tuesday. I don't know if many have heard of the action on Tuesday. Yes. Who yes. should call you about the action on Tuesday? Two people? <laughs> the action on Tuesday was a direct action um, in the detention center in Atlanta, um, where many um, activists came together and basically um, made an action inside the gates of ICE. This is the, um, our executive director, Adelina, from Clor, uh, speaking in the rally in March of October 5th. That's uh, our group of women that came together to speak with the senators here in Georgia um, to um, push, the, push them to support the immigration reform. And the picture on the right side, it's um, a picture for a, April 5th, it was April 10th of 2012. And um, we're gonna have Adelina talk a little bit more of the actions and the campaign of Not One More, um, which that's one of the pictures, and, in a little bit. And this is um, basically pictures of us trying to fundraise. We are a nonprofit organization. So um, we are like, you know, trying to, to, for, to continue our work we need the support of people coming together and fundraise money. We are we do not receive money from government or anything like that. So if um, you guys can spread the word, if you guys can spread the word for some people to donate to our organization, we would really appreciate it. You guys can go to the Glar website or by okay. So we can have an angel now. <laughs>
as these uh, secure community programs all over the United States have um, been created uh, to attack immigrant communities. Uh, we are about to reach almost 2 million immigrants in January. That's the number since 2009 to, to January uh, 2014. That means at the same time, hundreds of thousands of families have been separated, children left behind, Nobody wants to talk to the police, any to report any kind of crime. And we decide that the best way to counterattack or counteract all this action is organizing our communities. We have been working as community organizers more than 10 years. Apart looking into how to organize to adjust the new communities in the new society, which is Georgia happens to be Georgia, could be another state, but as well, we, we decide to say no one more. That means that we are not going to be uh, stand up or just an observance anymore of these separations of thousands of thousands of families all over the place. We decide, and as well, uh, you are about to see another video about our actions. Last, uh, last Tuesday, part of this campaign, No One More, that was Phoenix, then New Orleans, then Chicago, also Atlanta, San Francisco, and many other, many other cities are preparing themselves to do one, one, No One More through civil disobedience. We know and we have seen people that get concerned with the status quo, that all oh, you guys are too aggressive. You guys need to behave. Well, talk to a mother that has been separated from their children. Or talk to a children that doesn't have their mother anymore because has been processed for deportation. We think this is more aggressive to this civil disobedience. Immigration reform, they are playing politics right now. They are passing the ball between the Republicans and the Democrats. One say no, the others are too weak. They're playing games with more than 11 million people undocumented in this country. Many of them are the ones that prepare your meals every single day in restaurants or build your houses or take care of your children or take care of your, your house, your garden. And we think that we have earned the right to stay. And we will fight it until we win. If the, if the Congress would want to continue playing this game of politics, they can keep going. We don't care about that. But in first place, President Barack Obama is the responsible of these of deportations. More, almost two million persons have been a process for deportation, and we are asking to give a deferred action for everyone, to give an, an administrative relief to all of, of 11 million while Congress put themselves together and do something in benefit of our community. We don't believe at this point that the bill of immigration reform, the proposals that are around, are good enough for our community. They want to penalize, they want to put them in jail, they want to close the doors to so many immigrants. And they say, oh, there's a bunch of criminals there, that, 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 those are the ones that we are deporting. I also let you know that this administration is being criminalized in our community. People is getting stopped for their minor traffic violation. If I commit a DUI 10 years ago, I am being processed for deportation. Why our community has to be prosecuted twice? That's against the Constitution. That's the reason we are so in a rush to stop this, to catch up to teach our community, to organize our community, to mobilize our communities. We think that at the end of the day, what we are fighting is for, because our families are in suffering. Nobody reports any crimes anymore. You can see around the police officers looking at media and the newspapers, oh, we want the Latinos to come back and come to the festival. We decide not to participate, not to, not to collaborate with them anymore until they stop this kind of uh, harassment inside the immigrant communities. 
We will not report, not because we don't want to report, because what happened when we report a crime, the first thing, the thing that they ask for is for a driver's license that I don't have. <coughs> and instead of taking the, the criminal in jail, they're putting me in jail because I don't have a driver's license. This is all, all over the place in the state and probably in many other states. We think it's not fair that this is not a treatment that we deserve. That's the reason that we are moving around to create this not one more campaign as a movement to generate this change that we need. President Obama is the deporter in chief right now. Two million persons have been processed for deportation. And we decide on November 19th was last Tuesday to organize a civil disobedience. It's a way to symbolic to stop this machinery of deportations, this building in the Spring Street, downtown Atlanta, to close all the activities from that day from that building. More than 15 persons were arrested that day and all of them were released later at night, at, at, in, in the night. I think, I, we, we think this is just the beginning. This is just the beginning for all the suffering inside our communities. Um, let me just put a little bit of, the, uh, of this, give you a little taste of what happened. <laughs> Gracias. 
de bomberos de la ciudad de Atlanta y está levantando a los manifestantes. Tomás Martínez, who changed himself 
to the gate of the White House Woo! on September 18, 2010, 2000, okay. this year 13, and then he changed himself <laughs> again in the, uh, the gate at the Atlanta field office this past Tuesday. And he's happy. <laughs> Uh, as I mentioned to you, we have different comités populares, that means like com uh, people's committees around the state, but also we have a main group called gladiators, or gladiadores, <laughs> and, uh, uh, for our name is gladiadores, that uh, Tomás, as well, and other very active members are being the participants of different kind of uh, civil disobedience around the United States, and uh, we're so happy uh, the city of our community, that even though many of them do not speak English, many of them are low income and low educated, they are willing to stand up for their rights. And Tomás is part of this group. Thank you. Thank you. If you have any question or any comment, we have a couple of minutes more, so if you want to share something, you can do it your free time. How many Latinos and Latinas are in Georgia? How many Latinos? Um, I don't know the exact numbers. Um, are you going to have an idea? Yes, around 10% of the population. We believe it's more, but the census is telling you that the around percent. That means that between 800,000 or 900,000 Latinos or immigrants are in the state. So what kind of opportunities are there for participating in civil disobedience if you're not part of the communities that these are affecting? And Absolutely. If you let us have your name, your information, while well, we can contact you, absolutely, absolutely. Okay. And what, what kind of ways are there to help? There are many ways. Uh, we can, you can help us uh, if you are bilingual. I don't know if you are bilingual. Okay. But anyway, there is a lot. We do a lot of art, artwork, you know, for different events. We uh, have sometimes volunteers coming to help us to do whatever is necessary for the uh, for the rally, the marches, or the civil disobedience, matter of fact. But what we want is the first, the first to be in line in this campaign are the affected community directly. You know, we have, we, we have more allies and groups that are helping us as well, but uh, there is many. We have a hotline, it's a, a crisis line that our community call, calls every, every single day. We have an average of 600 calls every, uh, every month. Uh, with issues of people being detained, people being processed for deportation, uh, wage, wage theft, or a consumer rights violated. There are plenty of issues around, and the more we are rich, the more we receive a uh, phone calls uh, complaining or uh, giving us information about it. That means that the hotline allows us to get to know what is going on in their communities, to get to know what police, when, at what time, you know, it's very important for us to be very connected to our community and then organize around their own local issues as part as, as a huge network to connect each other. Yes, she, sorry. Do you guys have, um, like, provide resources and granting civil citizenship, English as a second language classes and job counseling, or do you feel like it's less possible considering the area you're from, like, with the volunteer pool and resources could you re-elaborate again the first part of your question? Okay. Um, do you guys provide job counseling, English as a second language classes, or um, granting citizenship? Our organization, believe it or not, is really small. Mm -hmm. We don't have enough resources, but maybe uh, with the help and support of uh, volunteers, we can have English as a second classes. Uh, four, more than four, four years ago, uh, based on the HB2, is a law that what, that was passed, that if the classes for our immigrant community undocumented, uh, classes English as a second language has been canceled. Uh, unless you belong to the state as kind of a, have an ID or a social security number that allow. That means that all immigrants undocumented are banned to receive uh, classes as uh, English as a, as a second language. No, yeah, well, no, that's another story. But in terms of where our community can go to the schools, yes. you know, they prefer to waste the resources instead of giving classes to immigrants out of public <coughs> That's a big So what are you saying that? Like, 
Yes, but as, as well, we can, we can open a space to have that if we have volunteers willing to take this, yeah. like a, you know, like a shirt uh, from a board and uh, <laughs> yes, it's also, you know? Yes. Well, <laughs> oh, you still have a radio program, right? Yeah. And, I mean, it's amazing. She's right. They have a very small staff, and I think you might have heard earlier, no government or corporate grants, right? individual contributions and I hope some other grants. And so certainly they can be supported financially, but they, they, they have a every weekday a yes. radio program? Absolutely. Uh, Tomás is part of that. Uh, Aninka or whenever they have a chance, we have this group, the Gladiators, they have their radio, this radio program where we, they discuss all of these issues around our activities. Of a kind of yeah, and it's amazing how much work they get done in the community. Just really impressive. I haven't been able to help um, because of my own projects, but I really admire this organization, and, and people in Georgia should definitely connect with it. What station is that? Thirteen ten. A.M. A.M. Out of Atlanta. Yeah. yeah. At what time? It's a. It's a time stuff. 10 o'clock Saturdays. Exactly. And the weekday, and you can call them anytime or to help the client, whatever you do, we're open. We, we will close the program and, and do it something special if it's necessary. And it's a Monday, Friday from 10 to 12. It's the main program. But it's a, a talk radio station, so it goes on all day long. So if you want to hear 13 a.m., also they are in, online, so you can find them. Radio Formación 310. And then the program where Clara had the opportunity to do is every Saturday at 10 a.m., and that's the, the Gladiadores program. So if you had a chance to go online, you're out of state, or if you don't, you don't live in Atlanta, you can uh, listen to that um, online. So do you have, do you have yeah. a question? Yeah. So, what is it that, so if they call the police, um, they ask for their ID, right? So what is it that they're doing now? If like, if they're in a domestic violence or, um, or if there's a crime that happened, like someone broke into the house, since they can't call the police, like what is it that they're doing now? Nothing. Nothing? So no. they're just letting it? There was, a, as mentioned to you, we have different rules all over the state, and in particular the South, in the south area, we have in Albany, uh, a Comité Popular, there's a kind of a big scandal because there was this guy that someone stabbed him to death and nobody called the police. And the police was very concerned, you know, about, you know, this guy is dying there and nobody called us. Mm -hmm. And the guy died, but uh, and died because nobody called the police so the police can send the emergency people there, and but nobody is willing to take that, that risk. And that's a problem. People being robbed or break into their houses, and they don't say a word. Why? Because it's like a circle. The, the more police, local police enforcement is chasing around our community, the less chances are that I am going to report a crime. I have a person in America, Georgia, from here very close, we have a, a Comité Popular as well. And he said, I remember years ago, if, um, if my car started to like uh, acting up in the road, you know, I just moved to the side, and I am, and so that if the police uh, used to uh, show up, show up, uh, okay, and then the policemen always ask us, for example, are you okay, do you need a ride, do you need gas? Now, you know, something happened like that. They say, sorry, bye, you know, and he goes wherever he needs to go, walking or calling or whatever, but they don't stay at the car. And that's, it's have changed that complete um, perception of immigrants have changed. The police is all over the place. When you go to the police, to one police, they say, no, 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 are the sheriff. If you go to the sheriff, they say, no, 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 they are the ones. They're kind of passing the ball to uh, one to, to each other, you know, blaming each other without taking the responsibility. But that's 
our community now decide as well to see and confront the police directly and locally. That means that GLAR is not like a living in Atlanta and going to fight with the police in America. The, Amer the people that live in America go and chase, and when they say, no, who are from America? They, everybody is from America, but they are fed up of the roadblocks, checkpoints. You know, it's the very, very aggressive the way the local police enforcement are acting against immigrant communities. If you are riding a bicycle, they stop you. If you are walking, they stop you. If you are in the road without committing any kind of traffic violation, they stop you. This is all over the place. All over the place, I believe it's not only here in Georgia, but also Alabama, Carolina, North, North Carolina, the Mississippi, New Orleans, it's all over the place. Do they need an excuse for a road to have a roadblock? Yes, in fact, in fact, there was a lawsuit uh, two weeks, three, two weeks ago, two weeks ago, that a, a judge, a state judge, <coughs> found the roadblocks that were placed in the county big county, big, very close to Mako, uh, were illegal. But exactly that practice is, is um, has been, uh, is, is, you would apply that practice to all over the place. But because nobody says anything, because nobody cares about anything, you know, they don't, they, they, nobody goes to court because of roadblock. If, uh, and the other part that we are lacking is this legal, uh, team, you know, like uh, actually ch chasers maybe, uh, willing to take the road with us and uh, 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 to file lawsuits against this local police enforcement. We do have here, very close from here in Fisherall, we have another Comité Popular in Fisherall, very close to Osila, is that the Bell, uh, Bell Hill County, that, that completely the jail is in pink. The uniform of the inmates is pink, yeah, yeah. you know? It's kind of the Arpaio style, mm -hmm. and uh, he brags a lot, you know? And that's, where, that's the part where we say that our communities are the ones that need to stand up, and this is we are working for. How difficult have you found it to keep your organization's activities peaceful and nonviolent? You know, we, of course, we are very open about that. Our actions are not violent. And I think that through community organizing, we have been able kind of redirect all the anger, that frustration that many parents, mother, families, brothers, sisters can feel. Mm -hmm. And it's through this kind of community organizing we are, the, we are the ones going and knocking doors and looking for Latinos all over the state, trying to put it together to organize, have events. That's kind of uh, and with uh, leadership tra with trainings as well. There was many, 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 no many years ago, but uh, like seven or eight years ago, here in Tifton, it's like, uh, I believe, three hours from here, South Point 75 South. Uh, uh, different families in Tiff County were attacked in the middle of the night, like uh, six persons, things, uh, six criminals were like uh, visiting different trailer parks during the night. Three trailer parks were visited. They went inside, inside these tra uh, mobile trailers and they were killing people. They killed six, they hurt another six, and they raped a woman during the night. Mm -hmm. Uh, we saw the survivors, survivors there, some of them. All these trailer parks where uh, Latinos used to live. That means that all the people that died that night were Latinos with a bat. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, uh, were the criminals you know, were uh, uh, African Americans. And, and we start to hear that they, the Latinos, the immigrants, wanted to buy guns, you know, to repeal in, in any way. What we tried to do at that time, I am talking about uh, five, six years ago, was to start getting inside the communities to educate them about as well the struggles of the African American community and what was going on with them and why are they getting into your house at night in order for us 
to stop, you know, violence with violence. And uh, try to educate our community as well. And that has been a process that has to do, it. we have to do it every single week, every single day. You know, we have been on the road almost, we are about to have 15 years looking and driving around the state, trying to organize, to educate our community. And we have seen the results now. The mobilizations, the civil disobedience, the rallies, the participation of all over these groups have grown immensely. And this is the best time to do the community organizing. Uh, and because exactly the context in which we are right now. It's a bad time, but it's the best time for us to organize. Thank you so much. Thank you. I think if I, if someone has another question, comment. But thank you so much. We really appreciate and remember that uh, immigrant rights as well as well human rights. Thank you. Good night. So we're going to start off. Um, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Michelle. I am with the Georgia Latino Alliance for Human Rights. Uh, we are based um, in the city of Atlanta. And uh, we are a grassroots organization. Um, we are a grassroots organization um, created to help and educate um, Immigrant, um, the immigrant community in the state of Georgia. Uh, we, uh, our purpose is to increase, um, increase the, the, the participation in the struggle of the community and um, for human and civil rights, regardless of their um, uh, immigration status. Uh, my partner, Amilka, he um, is with the Georgia Latino also. And I'm Hello, <laughs> my name is Amika and also with uh, Guar and we have, uh, are you going to say your name? Yeah, we want to so say, say your name and, and say where you're coming from, where you're from. Yeah. Atlanta. Atlanta. I'm Dana Sullivan, I'm from Chicago. Chicago, thank you. Um, I'm Mary Ann, I'm from Chicago as well. I'm Chicago. I'm Lisa. I'm from Chicago too. <laughs> that our community is facing all the time. You know, when they go to school, they they might be being stopped, and stopping um, being stopped can lead to a you know uh, two days in jail, ten days in jail, it, it, and transfer to immigration. And they want to talk more about the other stuff. Um, Georgia. For example, we have the SB 350, and this um, law, what it does is criminalize um, people that have been uh, stopped without a, li a driver's license. Uh, the first time you can get a, a ticket up to $500 in two or 10 days of jail. And then, if you are stopped without a driver's license, the second time, you know, the, the, the Ticket is going to increase, and the time in jail is also going to increase. After the fourth time, you can be. Um, this is going to be uh, or become a felony. So it's uh, just uh, a uh, traffic violation can lead to to have a record, a criminal record. So after the fourth time in Georgia, uh, driving without a license, you become a felon. Um, then we have the 287G program, which is a federal program. In Georgia, there are four counties that have this program. And uh, how many of you have, have heard about 287G? One, two, not many of you, okay. What this program does is it's an agreement between 
the county and immigration uh, eyes. Uh, so immigration has this agreement with the county and with, with someone is stuck, um, whatever. Mm -hmm. Anthony, um, I'm Laura and I'm from Vermont. Um, I'm Nico from DC. I'm Beth from DC. Uh, so Tomas, uh, I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. Adelina from Atlanta. Finnegan, I'm from New Jersey. So if you happen to don't have a license and you're stuck in Gwinnett County, which is one of the, the county in Georgia that is being deported, so many, many immigrants during, during these years. Um, so you, they're going to um, take your fingerprints and they're going to process you for deportation. Uh, so that's what happened in those counties that have uh, this agreement between uh, 
ICE, uh, Immigration Customs Department, and the county. And out there, the counties, Winnet County, uh, Cobb County, Hall County, and Whitfield County have this uh, program. So it's a very close, very close relation between immigration and the local police enforcement. So this is how this program works, and it's something um, that our community face all the time. Uh, it is in, just to mention also that these counties that I said before, they're very highly populated. Um, immigrant communities live there, and Latino communities, you know, are living there and um, uh, are facing this every day. Every day that they go, as I said before, go there, do their grocery shopping, or go take their kids to school, or whatever thing that they, every everyone, needs to do. And the other. Um, we have security communities, which is another agreement uh, between the county. This works a little different, but uh, it's also 